time for another Ask Joe stuff. This week's questions are submitted to us by the 7th and 8th grade students of Northwest Middle School in Salt Lake City, so let's see what you guys want to know. Hey, why do we have lines in our hands? Our hands have two kinds of lines, fingerprints and creases. Now take a look at your fingers. You see how you have lines on the backs of your knuckles and the front? Well, those creases work in alignment. Scrunch your hands into a fist and those lines allow our skin to fold and stretch without much tension. They're exactly like the folds on your elbows, your wrists, or your ankles. Gorillas have them too. Now, open your hands back up. Look closely, you see those little lines curving on your fingertips and palms? Your fingerprints are unique. You're the only person in the entire history of humanity, history of the universe, with that exact pattern. Although there is a tiny chance that another person might share the print on one of your fingers. That's why you see police collecting fingerprints from the bad guys on crime shows. They're forever linked to their fingerprints. You even have fingerprints on your toes. Now, scientists aren't really sure what the evolutionary value of fingerprints are, but they've come up with a couple of theories. They might increase sensitivity to help us feel textures better, or they could wick away moisture for a better grip in wet conditions, or it could reduce rubbing forces, which helps prevent blisters when you're playing outside on the monkey bars or climbing trees. Maybe, Maria, you'll be the one to figure it out. Why do armpits stink? <laughs> Ugh, is that you? Oh no, it's me. Body odor, for the most part, is the result of a perfectly natural process. Armpits smell because we sweat, but it's not the sweat that makes us smell. We sweat to keep our bodies cool during exercise, times of stress, like when you've got a big test or a spelling bee or the big game or a video to film. Now, humans have two kinds of sweat glands, eccrine and apocrine. Eccrine glands are found everywhere, but apocrine glands are mainly limited to your armpits, and it's them you should blame for the smell. Now, any one moment, you've got about a trillion bacteria making their wee little homes in and on your body. Those bacteria have to live somewhere, and some of them have cozied up in your armpits. Well, the apocrine sweat doesn't actually smell on its own. Some of the bacteria there feed off of it, producing an enzyme that breaks down fats called lipids. A few of these smaller molecules do, in fact, give off a certain fragrance. Your natural perfume depends on your genetics, what you eat, how often you bathe, if you have certain medical conditions, or if you ran a marathon like I did, or if you're stressed or nervous. I'm fine though. Is there going to be a laser that can burn through stuff? And, and is it going to be used in wars? Albert Einstein laid the foundation for lasers in 1917 with the quantum theory der Strahlung. Since then, lasers have become common in scientific research, medicine, and yes, warfare. Although they aren't used to burn up stuff so much as they're used to target things. But in 2010, the US Missile Defense Agency did successfully heat up a missile enough to make it explode. But that program was expensive and seems to be phasing out. Lasers have produced a lot of amazing technology outside of weaponry. Printers and CDs, which you've probably never heard of, and eye surgery and fiber optics, which have fundamentally changed the way we communicate. All of those depend on laser technology. In the future, it could revolutionize healthcare with better medical diagnostic tools for diseases like Alzheimer's, clean, efficient energy production, and laser holograms, which would be awesome. Hey, when are they gonna make one of me? But remember, over long distances, lasers are difficult to focus. So yes, lasers can burn stuff up, but that process can be just as creative as it is destructive. If you want some more laser goodness, you can check out our video about the physics of space battles right here. Do humans have a limit to intelligence? <laughs> Clearly, no. Well, other than me, though, the short answer is yes. The laws of physics seem to have set an upper limit on smartness in humans with heads that are set up like ours. But that shouldn't worry you. The brain is an incredibly complex system. Your head holds more neurons than there are stars in the galaxy. And it's still kind of a mystery exactly how we move, feel, emotion, see, and remember things. The brain processes information by sending electrical and chemical signals between neurons, which happens really, really fast. A movement like pulling your hand off the hot stove results in signals that travel 250 miles per hour. Given that they only have a couple feet to go, reflexes like that only take fractions of a second, which is really good for your hand. Ah! So would a bigger brain make us smarter? Eh, probably not. 
Bigger brains require more energy, and energy is costly. But one trait that makes humans kind of weird and special is that for our body mass, our brains are about seven and a half times bigger than predicted compared to other mammals. One way you could get signals to travel faster is to make part of the neuron called the axon thicker. It's like getting a fatter cable for your computer. More space for information to travel means information can travel faster. But as you make nerves bigger, you can fit less of them in your brain, so you have fewer neurons to do all of that awesome processing. It's a trade-off. If you make axons smaller so they're closer together and more abundant, there tends to be more noise, more random signals like The fact that our neurons haven't changed size is also pretty special. As the brains of our ancestors grew bigger, the size of our neurons has mostly stayed the same. Most other mammals get bigger neurons as their brains get bigger, but not us. We've stuffed just about as much in our brain suitcase as we can. Now, back to your original question. Does the human have an intelligence limit? Well, that depends on what you define as human. Maybe by the time you grow up, technology will surpass our own abilities. Thanks again to the students of Northwest Middle School in Salt Lake City. Stay curious. 99% of us end up being good with one hand and not the other for common tasks like writing, high-fiving, and the all-important one-handed texting. Even life itself seems to have chosen sides.